Hey, Messiah family, good morning. Good morning. It is good to see you. I hope that you're well. I hope you're happy. I hope you're rejoicing in the Lord, the God of our salvation. Hey, make sure that you have on your calendar the 28th of February. That's a Monday night. That is our time for vision and business at Messiah. I'm excited to share with you the amazing things that God has done, how he has used your giving in particular and uh, where we are headed. And so make sure you put that on your calendar. You will see more information as to how to be a part of that gathering. We have been in the uh, financial success series um, up until last week when we took a break for the Valentine's Day weekend. I hope you felt the love of God. And thank you to so many who made our um, excess love gathering a real blessing and a real help. Hey, take a moment right now and share the link with somebody. Go ahead, invite somebody in. I'm trying to encourage you that our job is to make sure people can hear and access a word from the Lord that will be helpful for their lives. All right, all right, let's pray. Father, we thank you, we honor you, bless you and glorify you. Speak to us, we pray, oh God, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Grab your Bible, we are in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 25, oh, right around verse 24, Matthew 25, verse 14. I said 24, I meant 14. What would you do if someone handed you $50,000, what would you do? Some of y'all, I, I, can, I can just see your, your wheels turning right now. What would you do if someone handed you $20,000? $20, what would you do if someone handed you, another one of you, $10,000? Okay, let's break the level down while you're thinking about it, because I know you're like, ooh, I will pay this, and I will pay this, and I will buy this, and I will do this. And listen, ain't no judgment. These are not trick questions. I want you to think about what you would do. How would you, how would that impact you? Okay, so let's break it down. What if, what if somebody handed you, um, I don't know, uh, $5,000? And somebody handed you $1,000, another one of you right? What would you do? <laughs> what would you do? Right? And then somebody handed you $200. What would you do? Here is, here's the thing I want you to think about. What is your mindset when it comes to um, handling surprise resources from God? What, what is your mindset? How do you think about that? How do you process that? Now, you know, whenever we start talking about money in church, there's always a certain element of folks who are like, oh, here we go again, right? Here we go again. And those folks are probably people who are struggling financially. I want you to know that this message in particular is not what you think it is because most people, when they hear about money in church, they're thinking, oh, we're going to talk about the tithe. Listen, the tithe is biblical. The tithe is right. And I think the devil robs people of their blessing who don't want to hear about the tithe. But today's message is not about the tithe. I want to talk today from the subject, no risk, no rewards. No risk, no rewards. Say that with me. No risk, no rewards. The, the question that I want to pose to you is... Um, <laughs> what will God be able to reward you with because of how you see and, and function with money? Let's get into this. Um, I think the best way for me to get into this text is to start with this first scripture. The first scripture, verse 14, for the kingdom of heaven, I'm reading from the New King James Version today, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. The kingdom of heaven uh, is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. Now, 
you will never understand your faith in Christ until you more fully understand the concept of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. We, we were, most of us, born and raised in a democracy where everybody's opinion counts and everybody's opinion matters. But in a kingdom, it, is, it doesn't function that way. Things are not run by vote. Come on, help me talk, somebody. Things are run by the, on the basis of a kingdom or a king who is a sovereign and subjects whom he declares to be his servants. When you think about your faith, God's economy is a kingdom, and it is that kingdom in which he is the king, and we, his subjects, are his servants. You say, well, I don't want to be a part of a kingdom because what if it's a bad king? Well, that's, that's a great question because in a lot of um, nations who are kingdoms or who have kings, there are fallible kings, but the God we serve is a beneficent, benevolent king. That's what I want you to get. He is, he is in charge of his kingdom, and he has servants who are his subjects. And the goal of the king and his kingdom is to expand his territory. Am I making sense yet? The goal of the king and his kingdom is to expand or to enlarge his territory. We've seen this uh, in, the, in the earth realm. We've seen this with, with kings and their kingdoms. Uh, some people uh, know, know about colonialism, the practices of colonialism. Portuguese, the French, um, the UK, all colonialized other nations. And their objective, listen to me, was to expand their territory and to set up little kingdoms colonies in other places so that those places would look like the original kingdom and be subject to the head of state or the king. Am I making sense here? God, when he, when he talks about his kingdom, um, he, is the, he is the first and principal model for this whole notion. And you know, once man gets a hold of anything God creates, man makes a mess of it. And so we, we come to this parable, Jesus is teaching. He's teaching about a very normal circumstance in order to convey a very powerful spiritual truth. And Jesus enters into this, this, this story, this parable, and he, he says to the disciples, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. Let's read some more. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went away on a journey. Ah, this is good stuff. The one who is over the kingdom, uh, he, is, he, he, he owns a realm of property. Follow me, stay with me. And he has subjects in the kingdom. And while he goes to a faraway place, it is a picture of, of Jesus going to heaven and listen, leaving, leaving resources with his servants, his subjects, those of us who know him. Somebody shout, I'm just a servant. I'm, I'm just a servant. He's trying to depict to them um, what it looks like when God entrusts resources to you and, the, and what God expects for us to do with them. Is this making sense yet? He says he goes away and he call, before he goes away, he calls his own servants, his own servants, and he delivers his good. Uh, one translation suggests he gives up his goods to them. He entrusts his goods to them. He takes what's his, he gives it to them, he walks away, goes on his trip, and he leaves them with his stuff with an implied expectation. In fact, more than implied, it is, an, it is an understanding that if the king entrusts something to you, he expects you to do something with it. Somebody help me talk right now. Somebody shout, you got to do something with it. You got to do something with it. When God gives you resources, you got to do something with it. Ooh, stay with me. We're going somewhere. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, 
and to another one. The Bible says he gave to each one of them according to their ability. This guy walks off and he leaves them. He entrusts his land to them, his, his realm, his kingdom, his property. And he gives to each one of them um, a certain amount of talents. These talents are not talents like you and I think of. They're not like, what are you good at, talents. These are, these are bags of gold. And so to one, he gives five talents of gold. It, it would be the equivalent of about 20 years worth of one day wages. He gives this guy enough money, enough gold, that he could actually live on this for 20 years. He gives the next guy two talents, a little less. He gives another guy one talent. And the Bible says that he, listen, this guy is so astute as to the, uh, the capacity and the ability of his own servants that he's like, I can give this guy five. Uh, he, he'd be good with two. This one, I, I better give him one. Listen, he is, not, he is not demeaning them. He's simply clear about what they can handle. Come on, help me talk, somebody. Some of you are like, well, how? Because I've been wondering, why can't I make, why can't I make 300,000 or 500,000 or 700,000? Could it be that God knows what you can handle? Could it be that God knows exactly what you are capable of if he would put those kinds of resources in your hands? How many of you are glad that God gave you what he did give you? How many of you are glad that God didn't give you too much that would destroy you had he given it to you too soon? I feel the Holy Spirit right there. He says he gave to each one according to his or her particular ability. God knows exactly how much you can handle. Do you know <laughs> how much you can handle? He says he gave them according to their ability, and immediately he went on a journey. Verse 16, then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. I love this. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But, somebody shout but, but, but he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. One guy gets five talents. Another guy gets two talents. The third guy gets one talent. And the Bible says that the guy who got the five talents, I love this, says um, he went and traded with them. Now, that word traded is a, is a powerful word. It means that he went and worked with the five that he had and he began to work so that he could profit. Uh, we might say he went and flipped it. <laughs> uh, we might say that he, he took it and he turned it around. He took the five talents that was, were entrusted to him, and he understood that someday, someday, my Lord, that's what the word is, my Lord, we, use the, we get the idea of a landlord from that idea. He says, my Lord, the owner the one who entrusted this to me is going to come back someday and he's going to want to know exactly what did I do with the bag of gold that he gave to me. Who is this for right now? The one who got the two, he said, Lord, thank you for trusting me with two and I'm on your land, I'm on your property, you're my benevolent king. You're the one who meets all of my needs. And I can't believe you have entrusted to me two talents of gold. I got to do something with this. I got to make something happen. Who is this word for right now? You, somebody say in the comments, I got to make something happen. I got to make something happen. The third guy who receives the one talent, the Bible says that he takes the one talent. I don't know how many days uh, wages that is, but it's still a whole lot. It's less than the other two. But this guy takes what is entrusted to him and he goes and buries it. Now, this is what amazes me when I study this text. How are you going to take what is entrusted to you to expand and bury it on the land of the man who owns the land? That's, that's real crazy. He gonna, listen, 
First of all, let, let's get a few things straight. First of all, this Lord entrusted his resources. Can I just help you understand? Everything you got, God has entrusted to you. There's nothing you have that belongs to you that came from you or originated with you. I feel the Holy Spirit right there. The, the, the degree didn't originate with you. The job didn't originate with you. The money from the job didn't originate with you. The ideas for your company did not originate with you. Listen, everything you and I have has been entrusted to us. And here's the whole kicker to this, this, this entire passage. The Lord, the owner, wants to know, are you willing to take any risks? This is where I want you to, I want you to focus today. God, listen, some people don't recognize that the God we serve is a class A business leader. He understands money through and through. And what he's looking for is people, stay with me now, who understand that our responsibility as subjects and servants in his kingdom is to use money to expand his kingdom, to expand his realm into other parts of the world. It is to expand his realm into the other uh, areas of the neighborhood. It is to expand his realm and his, uh, his glory. Listen, this is what we call the mandate to multiply. All throughout the, uh, the first uh, few chapters of Genesis and all throughout the, the Bible, we see this idea, be fruitful and multiply. Somebody say that. Be fruitful and multiply. Here's what I learned about people who don't multiply. As they are not risk takers. I ask you the question, what would you have done with the money? If somebody gave you 50000 or, or or they gave you 20000 or if they gave you 10000 what would you do with the money? Here's what I've learned about most people. Most people would find things to spend the money on rather than finding things to trade it in and to invest in and to multiply it. Try that one more time. Most people take the money they receive and they simply exist on it. And most people live from paycheck to paycheck because they have not developed a sense of investment, um, uh, how do I say this, a sense of what it means to invest, to take risks, and to expand the resources. Woo! Are you, well, let me ask you this way, how much tolerance for risk do you have with what God has entrusted to you? The Bible says that the guy with the five talents went and traded. He went and did business. He went and took some risk and he doubled, he doubled the money. Guy with two, he took it, he traded, he worked some deals, he, he invested it, he comes back and he now has doubled his money. The guy with one ain't got nothing but what he had. Can we just talk about uh, people who take risks? I've learned that people who, who, uh, who don't take risks are very cautious, are very risk averse. They play it safe in life. And as a result, they never really grow and expand. God is looking for some people who understand the power of multiplication when it comes to his resources because we cannot expand God's kingdom if we don't expand his resources. Am I helping anybody today? We cannot expand God's kingdom if we don't expand our thinking to begin to see money differently. Do you have, um, uh, do, do, do you have money that you're investing? Money that you are um, uh, you're using it in, in an effort to grow it. I didn't say take your grocery money, take your mortgage money, take your car. No, I didn't say, but do you have money that you have set aside that you said, Lord, this is so that I can expand, so that I can grow it, so that I can be more effective for you, so that I can expand your kingdom. I'm expanding somebody's thinking right now. People who, listen, people who don't think risk and expansion usually are not tithers because they're too afraid that they won't have enough to live on. Preach that, pastor. Preach that. People who don't take risks, who don't expand, who don't, uh, who don't look for opportunities to invest, 
whether it's to invest in your education or to invest in a 401k or to invest in an IRA or to invest in, in your, some other kind of retirement vehicle, people who don't invest don't grow. I don't even know <laughs> who I'm talking to today, but I believe this is the word God gave me to share with you. Are you living too cautiously? I love what Eugene Peterson says in the, uh, in the message version when God calls every one of them to account. He says to the one who, who, who took the one talent and buried it, Eugene Peterson says, the master was furious. That's a terrible way to live. It's criminal to live cautiously like that. If you knew I was after the best, why did you do less than the least? God, listen, God is trying to get you to see that life is full of opportunities. But opportunities cannot be seized without taking risks. And if you don't take any risks along the way, there will not be any rewards. There will not be any rewards financially for you, and there will be no rewards in the kingdom if you and I don't take risk for God in order to expand his kingdom. What are you willing to risk in order to grow, in order to expand, in order to make a bigger impact, in order to make a bigger difference? you got to be willing to risk something. Somebody shout, stop playing it safe. Stop playing it safe. Stop living your life like, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. There are people who, who never move to a, listen, who never buy a house because they're afraid of the whole notion of having to actually pay for the repairs. Come on, help me talk somebody. I don't want to own no house because I don't want to be responsible for the repairs. Are you kidding? Listen, to, own, to be homeowners is, is, is the principal way in this nation to grow generational wealth. You should be wanting to own one home, two homes, three homes, four homes. Who am I preaching to right now? Somebody shout, expand, 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 expand. God, listen, God is not, he is not interested in you just living status quo, laissez-faire, just get by, don't want no more. People who don't take risks won't never move to another city. Well, I don't know. That's, I don't know if I could do that. I, all of my family is in this state, and what if I go over there? Listen, if your opportunity is over there, you got to be open to taking the risk to move because God may want to use you there. Am I making sense? Some people never uh, 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 um, invest um, because for fear of losing money, but they go and play the lottery. You get no, no prospect of winning when you play the lottery, but you won't invest. Listen, if you invested $100 a month into a mutual fund for 20 years, you could have close to half a million dollars. Somebody shout, expand, expand. That when there's no risk, there's no reward. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to fuel a, an expansion mentality. I'm trying to break a pauper's mentality. I'm trying to break a narrow way of thinking. Listen, people who don't expand, people who don't take risks can never make a great impact and a great difference. You can make a little bit of difference, but you can never reach your potential is what I'm trying to help you see. Come back to me with this text. Bible says, he who had received one, verse 18, went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. Hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. He came, he said, come on, let's, let's, let me see what, what you've done. Let me see what you've done. Do you know that one day the Lord, Jesus, is going to come back and say, let me see what you did. Let me see what you did. Let me see what you did with the talents that I gave you, with the abilities I gave you, with the money that I entrusted to you. What did you build? What did you expand? What did you grow? What did you, what did you make happen with what I gave you? By the way, I, 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 I planted Messiah Community Church because I wanted to see the kingdom expand. I, I started writing books because I wanted to see the kingdom expand. I started my business because I wanted to see the kingdom expand. You understand what I'm saying? 
God is looking for people who are expansion minded, who are growth minded, who will take some risks. Listen, you are going to fail at something, but the great Wayne Gretzky put it this way. He said, you, you will miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Who is that for? Won't, won't, won't invest in a 401k or IRA, won't, won't try to buy a house, won't try to move. The, he says, if you don't invest, if, <laughs> let me see, if you don't take the shot, you can count on missing. I don't want to get to the end of my life. I think, boy, I really wish I had tried that. I really wish I had swung for that ball. I really wish that I had given that opportunity a try. Listen, life is a, life is a series of opportunities, even when they come painfully. And sometimes they're disguised in brokenness and they're disguised uh, uh, in risky situations. Listen, God wants you to be able to assess risk and reward. I'm trying to encourage you, don't be like this guy here who just went and buried what he had. He played it safe. He wouldn't give things a try. He wouldn't step out. He wouldn't strike out. So he who had received the five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. He says, listen, look, this, look what I did. Look what I, look what I brought back. This, listen now, the, he and the one with the two talents, the, the guy with the two says, um, well, let's go to verse 21. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also uh, who had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I've gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He says to both of these guys, listen now, the exact same thing. He says, well done, my good and faithful servant. You did. You had five. You brought me five more. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You had two. You brought me two more. Listen, he he didn't listen. He didn't praise one more than the other because you he he didn't expect you to succeed on a level that you're not on. Come on and help me talk, somebody. He expects you to succeed on your level. Invest on your level. Take a risk on your level, but take a risk. Step out. Do something to expand the kingdom. Be fruitful and multiply, and stop playing it safe and stop playing it afraid. He says to both of them, well done, good and faithful servant. Now watch this. He says, you were, you were faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you ruler over many. Y'all catch that? He says, with the, you, you were faithful over the small thing. You served in obscurity. You worked where nobody else could see you. It, it didn't seem like much to everybody else. I just gave you a few things. I gave you five talents. I gave you two talents. He said, but you saw the small opportunity as an opportunity to take risks and to be faithful. He said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. What are you doing with the small opportunity? <laughs> we're, 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 uh, we're rebuilding teams at Messiah and extending opportunities to come and serve and make a difference. Camera operators, tech people, children's ministry, uh, parking lot. But for some people, you're missing your opportunity to see God elevate you because you may not understand that elevation comes from multiplication of the small thing. One day doing it, another day doing it, another day doing it faithfully, another day showing up and investing and making a difference. Listen, it might be small, but your elevation is tied to your multiplication. It is tied to your willingness to step in and do the small thing, to invest in God's kingdom. Some of y'all are like, Pastor, I thought this was about money and not, not about talents. Well, it is. It's about that too. It's about that principally. Listen, God is, God is looking for people who will invest in his kingdom. Some people, some people say, well, I don't have, have $50,000 to give, so I'm not going to give anything. 
Well, how about if you faithfully risk the $100 a week or the $200 a week or whatever it is? God is looking for people who will invest uh, systematically, faithfully, and he, will, he wants to say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. He says that to both of them, but I love this. He says, um, you were faithful over a few things. You were faithful over the little things. I'm going to make you a ruler over many things. My Lord, he is speaking to them. Listen, he says, I'm going to promote you. I'm going to promote you in my kingdom. And what he's trying to help them see is that in the future, when they get to heaven, they're going to be able to rule over some stuff. They're going to be, um, uh, Peterson says in the message version, he says he's going to make them partners in his, in his business. We, I think we're going to be surprised when we get to heaven. When we see some people who got great roles in heaven and some people who had great roles on earth who got little small roles in heaven. That's why Jesus says, and the first will be last and the last are going to be first because some people wouldn't take the risk on the small thing to be faithful and to say, God, I want to expand your kingdom. I want to, I want to invest resources. I want to take what you've given me and I want to make a difference. I want to expand your realm. It says, you were faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Goes down to verse 23. He says, um, actually verse 24, then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, 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 look, look, look here, look here. Uh, um, now, I knew you to be a hard man reaping where you have not sown. And that takes some real audacity. Uh, I knew you to be a hard man, and you're going to try to get something where you ain't done no work. <laughs> he's talking to the owner. He's talking to the master. He, he's talking to the one who owns it. Yeah, and I knew you, you, you're a hard man sometimes, and you want to get stuff out of stuff, and you didn't pick up no, you didn't pick up any uh, um, uh, bags and labor. You, you didn't go out and sow any seed. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't till the soil. You didn't do anything. And now you want to come back and you want something back from me? <laughs> Whoa, that takes some real audacity to say to the Lord, I knew you would be unfair. Let me tell you something. The Lord is not going to be unfair with you. But because he's the boss, he expects something from you. Y'all don't want to hear that today. Because he's the boss, because he's the Lord, because he owns it all, because everything you have comes from him, he expects something from you. He expects you to give generously. He expects you to serve faithfully. He, listen, he expects you to break a sweat on his behalf to expand his kingdom. He expects you to take some risks in order to grow and to grow something. Listen, it seems unfair, but God is going to measure our faithfulness. This guy said, you, you, you must be kidding. And gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid. Let's get down to the real, <laughs> the real meat of the, the matter. He was scared. First of all, his attitude was wrong, like some people in church. Come and help me preach. I, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. Why they want me to do that? Why they want my money? They all, every time I turn around, they're talking about money. They're trying to do this, trying to do that. That is a sign, a sure sign of fear. He said, I didn't do anything because I was afraid. And so I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is your, look, hold on, hold up. Wait a minute. Have you lost your mind? Do you not know who you're talking to? This guy has no respect for the authority of the Lord. Do you have more respect for the Lord than to say, oh, just look over there. I, I put your little talent over there. This guy's got some audacity, some gumption. But the Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown. You were right and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. He said, if you had any sense, you would have at least put it in the bank and let it grow some interest. You would have put it in a mutual fund. 
you would have you would have put it in some sort of a savings account that would accrue some interest, but you ain't do nothing. First of all, you're wicked because of the way you disregarded my authority as the Lord over your life, who gave you life and who gave you opportunities and who gave you resources and who, listen, who opened doors for you and who has blessed you and who has been beneficent and benevolent towards you. And you got the nerve to turn around and say, I ain't want to do nothing. I ain't had time to do nothing. That didn't make no sense for my life. I don't know why they want that anyway. He says, at least you could have said, well, let me, let me see if I can make something happen with this. Let me, let me see what the bankers can do with this. Let me see if I can get somebody else involved in this. Let me see if I can do something. I don't feel like doing all that work, but maybe I can get somebody else involved. He said, at least you could have done that. Then he turns around and says to him, for to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have even what he has will be taken away. And some people might be wondering why they're struggling. And some people might be wondering why I used to have it like that and I don't have it like that anymore. Talked to a guy recently. He said, Pastor, I'm really going through it financially. And I, I just, I, I'm, 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 I'm afraid and I'm, and I'm down and I don't know what to do. And I said, hey, I'm wondering, um, have you ever tithed? He said, well, I used to. He said, I, yeah, I did, but I got away from it, and I wish I hadn't. What he was saying was, I used to bet on God. I used to take the risk with my resources and try to expand God's kingdom, but I started eating all my seed. I started using all the money for myself, and now I got issue after issue after issue financially. He says, to those who won't take a risk, who won't, listen, take, take the risk, trust God, try God, invest the resource, grow the resource, serve God, take, take the risk. Because he says to him who has, I'm going to give more to. See, some of us get, we, we hate on people who are growing their money. And God says, don't, don't, don't get mad at them. I keep giving them more because they're more faithful than you. Listen, there are non-Christians who are more faithful with money than some of us. They're more faithful. They know the principles of multiplying what they have. They know that scared money don't make money. Come on and help me talk somebody. They know that if you want to see a return on your investment, you got to take a risk. They know that there's certain things you just have to step out and you got to do. You got to be willing to take some risks in your life if you want to see a return and some rewards. That is both for here and now and for eternity. What are you going to do to risk to build the kingdom of God. He says, and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is a, that is a, um, a painful statement. This is a terrible way to end a sermon. Cast them into outer darkness. What God, what, what Jesus makes clear was, it was clear that that God didn't have a heart for God. He didn't have a heart for the kingdom. He didn't have a heart for the things of the Lord. He didn't, he didn't know who his, who his master was. He didn't recognize God as the one who has given him everything he needs for life and for godliness. And he disregarded the authority of God in his life. Have you disregarded the authority of God in your life? And what will God say to you and to me on that final day? Here's my prayer for you. My prayer for you is that you will grasp that expansion comes with taking risks for God. I'm not talking about stupid risks. I'm talking about sometimes giving more to God, sometimes giving more of your time to God, sometimes uh, doing more to simply build God's kingdom. It is, it is, a, it is a risky business, if you will. And in other regards, it's simply taking the risk to expand your own resources. Stop playing it so safe. No risks, no rewards. It is unfaithful to God to not try to grow, to expand, to make a bigger impact in his name and for his kingdom. Because someday he's coming back and he's going to ask us, did you make anything happen? Did you take any risks? Here are your rewards. I wanted to challenge you. I wanted to charge you today with that very principle to take some risks and to trust God 
God's been speaking to some of you. It's time for you to step out. He's been speaking to some of you. It's time for you to step up. He's been speaking to some of you. You've been sitting way too long, playing it safe, taking it easy, taking the laid back route. And the, and the clock is ticking on our lives. And someday we're going to have to give an account. And my charge to you is whether it's in the marketplace or in the house of the Lord, that you will, you will, you will run toward risk in the interest of God's name. Do something now while you can. Give more, serve more, invest more, grow more, and let God bless your risks. All right, hey, I will see you. What's today? I'll see you Tuesday night for the dig. But I pray today's message helped you, challenged you to see that it's worth taking a risk in the interest of God's kingdom. Do something. Do something for the kingdom. All right. I love you. I'll see you.